Welcome to part 6 of the Temple of Time tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. Alright, last time we had just finished this phase here. So it's time to go to the next one, of course. Another block level up. We're going to start at our usual place here, right at the windows. So you, you can see what we're doing here. It's just a repeating pattern with stuff we've already done. Bit of calcite in the middle and then alternate your glass blocks and your panes. We do have now some though some upside down stairs here because even though we've been building this vertical for quite a ways we're going to be doing another one of these elements here but that's going to be a little higher up and you'll notice this element is also going to occur the same on the buttresses and the other towers so it's meant to be a horizontal element to kind of tie all of the uh, the vertical stuff together so upside down stairs right there and oh oh wait wait a minute this is going to be one of these places where where we've got a filler block poking out where there shouldn't be one just right there and then the side window here and I believe that this is the last little block of copper to put there for this little decorative finial for for the window uh, frame top thing that we have done there. Uh, for the moment though, let's just go down the side of the building here. So once you do one of these windows, just like that, you wanna do the other one the same, on down, all, all the way down, for all those windows till we get to the wall back down here. Uh, but let's let's pause, pause right there and go back and take a look now at the detailing for the tower. So here you can see we're going to have uh, some upside down stairs here again. Just like so. And another one of these blocks is poking out where it shouldn't be. We're extending our diorite up a little ways. And all four of these windows, that you can see we're just going straight up with exactly what we've done before. Right here for the windows. And of course we have the same pattern right here for the upside down stairs and the window and the stairs again. Let me go ahead and replace those blocks. See, there's probably another one here. Yep. I should have stripped all the stairs off the building before I did the infill optimization, but uh, let me just give you a top-down view of that. And then let's take a closer in view from the inside so we can make sure we've got everything back on track. Get warmed up again after part five. Of course, if you're watching this later, I suppose you, you may just be watching them back to back. So you may be ready, be already be sufficiently warmed. Uh, so back over here, details for the flying buttresses. We have the lowermost portions of that with these blocks of dye right here and then upside down stone brick stairs on the other three sides right there and then uh, what 10 filler blocks you want to do all the other buttresses the same for buttresses two three and four just like so and uh, then with that we can come back here pick up our bookmark and uh, take a look at the wall detailing here and the window and of course we have again here Place the protruding block. We have the upside down stairs here. Oh, got another one. We got three right there. And then back here for the window. And then uh, just to make it simple, we'll just replace all of those with full blocks like that there. Let's take a look at it from below. Do we have a little stair in here right now? And a bit of a dial right here and of course upside down stone brick stairs extending to the wall right there. All right, we'll come back and take a look at the uh, the tower interior later. Let's take a look now at, at the wall section here for the exterior component. 
We're just extending the calcite up and the glass with the alternating patterns like we've been doing. And then let's take a look back here at the uh, buttresses that are going to be back here. So of course we've got the upside down stone brick stairs here on three sides and a bit of offset dial right here. Now because we have to have a diagonal buttress to follow, you can kind of see it with the, uh, the roof line here. The buttress is going to need to go from this point here to connect to that point there. So if we built a straight one, it would just be going off over there and miss it entirely. Uh, and uh, if, uh, if you're doing this in reality, I mean, you know, that's an easy fix to make, but when you only have Minecraft to do this with, you have to approximate that with blocks the best you can. And that's what I've tried to do here. Of course, if we had uh, if we had a much larger cathedral, we could use a higher block resolution, and uh, it would it would look better just because we had more blocks to render it with. Uh, but uh, at this stage here, it's already quite large, so I think the most you could probably do with this would be a two exit. But I don't really want to make it uh, make one that big. If they start to get uh, just entirely too big at that scale. Uh, so, back here at the front, let's take a look now at the interior. Detailing like we always do. Of course, once you do one of these windows, you've probably already done the window, so I'm just going to slide on past that. And we'll take a look back here at the wall, the detailing for the starburst ribbing we have back here with the, the calcite. To sort of approximate, uh, I think they're supposed to approximate uh, beam, beams of sunlight going out from, from this point here, just like, uh, just like we have in the sun up there, you know, you see the little rays. Um, so let's take a look now here, uh, top down at the entire wall section, take in a bit of the tower. Let's take a look now inside the tower, so we can get all of that. It's just the wall is going straight up for the most part for this. And the detailing in here for the uh, the stairs and everything, uh, which we want to, uh, to fill that in. And fill, fill those in just like that to correct the places where we have, uh, where we have these filler blocks. Any place you see a, a filler block that should end up being visible, just replace it with some cobblestone or some stone bricks or something. All right, let's take a look now here on the interior. So this is just going straight up like we've been building. Right back here, no surprises with that. And then over here for the windows, which you've probably already done too, because they're pretty thin. So once you see it from one side, there's not a whole lot to see from the reverse. Not until we get up to start building the, uh, the octagonal dome on this. That's going to be fun. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to get up that high today. I think we might get to the lowest most portions of it. I don't know. We'll see how long I can talk for. Uh, so back over here for the next phase, we got the windows with the calcite. Of course, we have some blocks hanging in over here because what we're going to be doing is making some uh, some tracery. Again, you, you remember our good friend, the tracery. We, we talked about him quite a lot during the first couple of videos. Alternating the glass. And then just full stone bricks on top of those upside down stone bricks that we put down. Just like so. Uh, another window here. I think you can see we just got a simple repeating pattern going on with the windows here. Alternating the glass layers and alternating the blocks and the panes and alternating the stone bricks and the cobblestone and the tuff. All the way to the wall back here where we'll put down a bookmark there. And go back to the front tower here. So here's the detailing for the front tower. We've got a little bit of diorite leaning over here. Because this is going to form, as I said, the lowest most portions of our, 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 our flying buttresses. Which is, of course, just it's, it's, like, it's like half an arch. It's like a support just leaning against the building. Well, I mean, it's kind of attached to the building, I should say. It doesn't really lean against it. What it does is it takes the uh, it takes the forces that come out of the building at that point and uh, and channel them channel them down through the rest of the arch, sort of bends them down and then uh, puts them into the ground 
with the bulk of the pier over here that's behind it on the tower and everything. Purely structural element to keep the whole thing from falling down, but I have to say it's, it's uh, very visually pleasing how it was done. All right, uh, once you do one of these little corners, all the other ones are the same except for the detail here where the buttress is with the diorite. Right. Those two should be identical. And of course, the rest of the buttresses out here uh, stone bricks on top of all those upside down stone brick stairs, just like you see done here. Put a stone brick stair and then lean out the diorite right one block right there. Once you do one of those, do that the same for the other three remaining buttresses. And we will go back here, pick up our bookmark, and take a look at this here. Except for a couple of sections, this should be pretty straightforward, but I know this is probably a section I could maybe skip two blocks at a time in and maybe it'll go a little bit quicker, but um, some people really need just to have everything slowed down because this is a really complicated building. It's just all done one block level at a time. I don't want to go too quick. Because, as I said, this is, a, this is an 11 out of 10 on the difficulty scale, so. All right, we've got, of course, this uh, buttress here just sort of tied into the wall. Um, it's possible I could have just built this entire wall and extended it. I did try to do that, but I, I think the effect looked better when I pushed it back in a little and just had the buttress uh, pop out of the wall. All right, here for uh, the details for the octagonal section at the back. Same thing that we've done previously. We're just going another block level up. And then back here for the buttresses, we've got, of course, the stone bricks, the full blocks on top of the upside down stairs, and then a block of diorite leaning out, like you see done there. And of course, your other buttress over here is the same design. And uh, let's go back and take a look at now everything from the interior. As I said, the walls here are very thin, so we're just going to take uh, kind of a quick look at this section here, because we're just going straight up for a lot of it. A uh, detail here for the back wall for the starburst rays. Like so. Let's go over in here, take a quick look at the detailing for the interior of the walls. And back here for the stairwell. All right, let's take a good top-down view of that section for a moment. And uh, back here, the central section going straight up, just like so. And I think that that's all there is to say about that one. Let's go on to our third phase for today. All right, uh, details here again with the calcite and the glass uh, blocks and panes. You know, the, there's the tracery again. Our old friend, the tracery. We're going to have a lot of that uh, in this episode. All right, now on top of the full blocks, we've got the upside down, I mean, we've got the, the, the right side up, I should say, stone brick stairs here, just like so. Whoops, we got one of these places where it's poking out again. Right there, so let's take a look here at the window, just like so, just extend it up another block level. If we get all the way to the back wall, we'll drop our bookmark here. And then go back to the detached front tower. And, uh, and immediately fix those two blocks there. We got our diorite right stacked on top of itself, just two blocks. Right there, and then the detailing here for the windows, just the same, just going straight up. And fix that. All 
And that one. And uh, these two. All right, here for the Flying Butcher, same deal. Stone brick stairs right on top of the full blocks. Ten filler blocks, a bit of cobblestone, and a bit of diorite. And do all of the other three buttresses remaining the same way. All right, detail here for the back wall. It's just going straight up for the moment. Same with the glass. Uh, got that poking out. And probably those two. In fact, let's just go ahead and replace that one too. Right there. Replace these. Like so. Actually, these, those two should probably be replaced as well. And maybe that one. And then right side up stone brick stairs here, all the way to the corner in the wall. And then we'll turn here and take a look at the detailing. Just a quick glance, because this is just going straight up, as you can see. Now a few more block levels it won't be, though. We'll have to start uh, slowing down and doing more details. Uh, speaking of detail back here for the buttresses, just like so. Diorite, cobblestone, stone brick stairs, three sides, just like that. Same detail for the other one here. All right, uh, back to the front. Take a quick interior look. And back here, detail for the calcite. All right, let's take a top-down view of this section here. As a unit, and now let's take a look on the interior right here. And uh, detailing for the stairwell. Good land for a moment. We're we're capping off the stairs here with their with their ceiling. Like so, replace those two with cobble. Actually, I suppose this, I think this here should have probably been a stone brick layer. As maybe that one down here should have too. Looks like I didn't, uh, didn't really carry through the, uh, the pattern like I should have in the stairwell. Stairwell Hill was one of the last things I did, so I was kind of in a in a rush to get it done. But it is just it is just a service stairwell. It's not really meant for people to to see that much. Although I suppose if you do have visitors, they probably will crawl through your attics. So so you might want to go to the extra effort of doing it. Uh, so back here, same thing, just going straight up for everything on the interior of the octagon, just like so. All right, let's go on to phase four for today. Detailing here at the front for the calcite for the tracery. Five blocks. Bit of glass right there on the sides. And then, of course, we're back to our vertical uh, ascending walls with the stone bricks and everything and the filler blocks. All right, so once you do one of these window panels here, do all the other window panels all the way down to the wall there the same. We'll take a look at the wall in a moment. Let's, uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at the tower. So we've got a bit of, um, I don't know if I fixed that on the last one or not. Those filler blocks there on the last phase. We got a bit of, uh, uh, it's, it's sort of like, a, it's, it's a bit of a cap for the top of our buttress uh, being formed here with uh, the, the cut copper and everything. We've got another uh, level being leaned over here with our uh, diorite blocks. And of course, the, the filler blocks and the full stone bricks behind that. Right there, the windows going straight up. 
and of course the, back to the of uh, the vertical ascending blocks right here. It just looks like we did down there for that section. We're going to be doing this again for a while on the tower till we get to another section where we have to do the, the stone brick uh, stairs and everything. Just like so. Uh, detail over here, same, same kind of thing for uh, the flying buttresses on this section as well, except for for this section here, we have a bit of um, uh, copper blocks, but uh, they're, they're, they're the, uh, the, the, the waxed level one blocks. I think uh, these are gonna, they're gonna go up for a little ways and it's just form a, a little chevron on top of there. Of course, to act as uh, counterweights, because you remember I, I said the forces are coming out of this part of the building. Well, in order to keep uh, this thing from being pushed over, this way and falling down, we need to have an additional counterweight on top of it. Just make sure that it's just too heavy to be pushed over in that way. It is why that we have this additional detail that we have here. So if you ever want to add flying buttresses to your buildings, remember uh, above uh, above the buttress uh, level down here, you can't just have it go straight straight this way. It needs to continue up for a little way so you can have a counterweight to make sure you have enough bulk and your buttresses on the exterior to make sure they're not pushed out by the force of the wall. See, that's why we can have these walls so thin right here. Because we have these thicker buttresses on the exterior here to take the thrust of the wall. And once you have done one of those, you want to do your other three buttresses exactly the same. And then we'll come back here and take a look at the wall sections now. So extend the glass windows straight up. This section here, just like we did at the tower at the front. It's really just a copy of that section, so. And then back here we have for this buttress, which I think, uh, I think that's why we don't, this buttress here, it's gonna, it's gonna be leaning over this way too. It's not just a, it's not just a, a vertical buttress to the wall. It, it does lean over a little bit. It's supposed to be a mirror image of this one. All right, so let's take a look here now slowly at the detailing for the octagon walls. And for the uh, side buttresses here, you can see we've got them, they're, they're beginning to show that they're going to be a little bit twisted off in this direction over here. So we can have them orientate with the wall. So it's only a really problem we have to deal with in Minecraft, of course. We're trying to replicate um, a rather graceful and advanced uh, shape, uh, but rendered into, you know, full uh, meter-sized blocks. So it is the best we can do, I'm afraid. But it's one of those things, if you don't look too closely, if you just stand back and look at it at a distance, you can kind of see what it's supposed to be. All right, let's go back to the front, take a quick look at everything on the interior, just for the sake of completeness. So we can make sure we have everything on the same track. Detailing for the walls inside the uh, tower here. And the simple detailing here for the stairwell. With perhaps, uh, with perhaps some extra blocks here, I think. These are probably all the, the stone bricks, I think. Just like that there. And then uh, just a quick look here at the octagon. You can see that's just all going straight up. Just like we've been building. Not for much longer, though. A couple more phases, I think. All right, next phase, phase, um, I'm losing counts, it's five, well, whichever phase we're doing today, it's the, it's the next phase is what it is. Number next, so uh, the glass right here in the middle, bit of calcite, two blocks, glass and calcite, and then back over here, we're alternating, just whatever random pattern you want to throw down with the cobblestone and the, and the tuff. Like so, and of course the window design is just going straight up. Same pattern we've been doing, so extend your windows all the way up till we get to the wall back down there. 
Uh, let's uh, look, take a look at the tower here. So you can see we have our buttresses are now becoming um, blah, 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 are now becoming detached from the wall. This is what gives them their names of flying buttresses. Just like so. And this, this, this uh, here, of course, is going to represent the first part of the flying part. Just like so. And here, of course, is the rest of the wall behind that. And the, the glass in the windows right behind that as well. All right, here are the other buttresses, but, uh, buttresses, buttressi, no, buttresses. Uh, so over here you can see we've just got a simple, simple six block pattern, and then the simple, uh, what, ten block pattern behind that. And of course you want to do all the other three buttresses the same. And then we'll take a look at the back wall here. And uh, we do have a little extra uh, blocks here. Because this is going to be the landing, because I think our stairs stop here, and then we're going to turn and start going up this way on the next phase. But we'll take a look at that uh, in a moment on the interior portion. Let's take a quick look here. All this is going straight up with the filler blocks and the glass, like so. Of course, we have our buttress uh, leaning out to the side here. It's a simple four-block pattern there with an extra two blocks back there. All right, let's take a look here at uh, the detailing for the octagonal windows. Same design, just going straight up still. And here's the detailing for the back buttresses. Same scheme we have on the straight ones, just up, you know, they're just being bent over a little into their, uh, their respective angles that they need to be in. Uh, so let's go back to the front. Take a quick gander at everything from the inside. Back here, the detailing with the calcite. And then here, let's take a look at the detailing for the stairwell. And on the interior, everything's still going straight up, just like so. And uh, that's all there is to it. We're pretty high up now. Uh, I might issue a safety warning to make sure you've got your elytra repaired. You know, in case you fall off. We don't want to, because if you fall off with a broken elytra from this point, I mean, you're a goner, so. Okay, don't, don't say you weren't warned. Uh, so next phase here, phase uh, six, six or seven, whichever. Phase number next, right here with the glass and the calcite tracery. The detailing there for the side of the tower. And then now we've got our first little bits of tracery appearing on our windows. We've been building these straight up for the last two episodes. Uh, but now we're getting our first elements of tracery. Right here, just simple pattern with the calcite. That's what, three, Five, seven blocks of calcite and two panes. For those, do all of those windows exactly the same until you get all the way down to the wall. And then pause there and then we'll come back and take a look. Now at the, the flying part of our flying buttress here, you can see it's flying straight over towards the wall, just like so. Two blocks overhanging in the air now with the diorite. And then the rest of the tower behind those here. Same detailing for the calcite tracery for these windows as well. Just like so for all of that. And let's take a look here at uh, these buttresses here. Same deal for these buttresses. Uh, four blocks of, cal of uh, calcite. Diorite there. And then uh, the, uh, the ten block sequence there with the stone bricks and the copper. I always wonder how uh, calcite got formed. I wonder if it's just like metamorphic diorite or something. 
I have no idea. Probably not. I have to. I'd have to look that up. Um. Uh, but uh, r rocks are always. I've always had a, a weakness for rocks. I've always found them fascinating, crystals and whatnot. But anyway, uh, so back over here, detailing for the wall. And the windows, just like so, same patterns that we did on the other ones. And then the pattern back here for the wall and the, the flying part of the buttress. You can see the four blocks of diorite are shifted over by one block towards the left that way. And let's take a look here. You can see, of course, we got the same detailing. For the windows now, for the tracery for these, following the same design we did for the other ones. Uh, it gets squished around a little bit here on the diagonal though. So we finally got something different to build here. Like there, and here's the diagonal detailing for the buttressing at the back. All right, let's go back to the front, take a quick look around the inside. I think uh, I could probably skip this section and save time. Let's go through a little quicker because I think you probably already built all this sequence. Uh, here are the detailing for the calcite uh, sunburst rays on the back wall. Uh, the de detailing here for the stairwell. Like so, you can see we've got our stairs that came up to this point here, and then we're turning and then we're going. Back around that section there. Our twisty turny stairs. Uh, so here for the interior of the octagon, same detailing for the dummy windows for the calcite tracery. Right here and here on the diagonal. And then uh, that's all there is to see. Now let's go on to uh, phase, whichever number this ends up being, eight or nine. I'm thinking it's eight, but 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 who's keeping count? Uh, so back here for the calcite block in the middle, then some glass and more calcite here for the tracery. It's like so. In fact, I think if memory serves, this this lowermost section here, this little arc is going to be our incised uh, rose window into the frame. I sort of, uh, for this design, I chose to inset a rose window inside of a larger window. Uh, some cathedrals, they'll have those be separate. Sometimes they'll have them put together. It just really just depends. All right, so uh, same but different detailing here for the tracery for the calcite windows here. Five blocks of calcite, four panes for each one of these windows, just like so. You want to do that all the way down until we get to the wall. And you can see now, of course, we have our flying buttress has made contact with the wall. Right here. It's like so. Uh, just uh, four blocks of diorite and then the cobblestone and the tuff and the copper. And then let's take a look now at the detailing for the uh, now detached tower. Because the Temple of Time, it's got those, it's got the, the main central tower and then two flanking towers right beside it. So I, I tried to replicate that pattern within the confines of what I thought was reasonable to do for Gothic architecture. Just like so. All right, so for the rest of the buttresses here, you want to do exactly the same thing for the next four. And here's the detailing for uh, the, the, the big counterweight thing that I described previously. Just uh, six blocks there for each of the four buttresses. And let's go down here, take a look at the wall. The patterning for that. Well, patterning for that. Right there. 
Same deal for the windows. Just like that there. And you can see we also have our uh, diagonal buttress now connecting right here as well. Another four blocks of, cal of uh, calcite. All right, shift it over like so. And then of course the, the, the freestanding wall behind that. So here's the detailing for this window and then this buttress here. And then the diagonal window right here. It's got the uh, calcite and full blocks of glass. And then the diagonal buttress here. With its counterweight. And then the flat window at the back. All right, so let's go back to the front here. Take a quick look on the inside. A detail here just straight up for the calcite sunburst in uh, in the middle anyway I think uh, this section here that's gonna form I think I'm pretty sure we have another arch that we're gonna start uh, building there let's take a look at the interior walls of this tower and the interior section of the stairwell All right, interior section here for the octagon. More tracery here with the false window. And the diagonal one. And I think that's all there is to that. So we can go on to the next phase. All right, uh, back here. More detailing for the tracery on our big window at the front. The biggest window we have in the cathedral. And then over here, we're gonna have a couple more of these blocks here. Oops, sticking out where they shouldn't be. Of course, we've got some more upside down stone brick stairs. Just like, fix that one. Just like we did back down here, we're going to be doing another one of those designs right here again. Like so. And we've got now a bit of exterior dial right here. And that's because we've gotten to the top of the flying buttress. So the next thing we're going to have is, of course, our pointy gothic arch. It's going to be going right on top of our window. So depending on how many phases we get through today, we may get to the top of that arch. I'll have to see how long we can go for. All right, and here the detailing for the rest of the flying buttress. We've got a little bit more to connect with the building here. And of course, once you do one of those buttresses and one of those windows, all of the other buttresses and windows are going to look the same till we get back here to the back wall where we'll put a little bookmark there and here is the detail I'll just extend everything up for the counterweights for the flying buttresses here on top of those and then back here let's take a look now at the detailing for this tower which kind of wondering why why this that probably, in fact, I'm almost sure that's going to need to be diorite. Okay, let's, let's keep an eye on that section. Go ahead and put diorite there for now. That may be one of those, one of those places where I didn't, because that, that should be matching the rest of these other three windows, I see, with the diorite. I'm not sure why that one doesn't. Well, I wonder why it's different. 
I think that's probably just a mistake I made. But anyway, you can see here, of course, we've got the upside down stone brick stairs. Right there. And replace those blocks. Right there to look like that. And this corner should match the other three or four corners. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that, that this sequence should be matching the rest of those windows. I'm not sure why it doesn't. I don't really want to skip ahead too much. Go ahead and build this window exactly like we're building the other, the other three. Because that's I'm pretty sure that's how it should be. That looks like another one of the little details I missed because it was it was it's it's hidden back here in this little hole between the arches and the rest of the tower, so it looks like I just didn't see that. When I was uh, copying and pasting the elements, I must have missed that one. Let's go back down here, pick up our bookmark, and uh, take a look at the wall here for the section. Same detailing back here for all of these things. Right there. Right there for that. And then another uh, string course upside down stone brick stairs here all the way, all the way over there. And then I think we've got, uh, we've got what? Two stairs right there in that little corner. And then the uh, topmost portion of our flying buttress here and then we've got a bit more diorite here like so And then back over here, this detailing for the diagonal buttress. Same detailing over here for its counterweight. Now for the diagonal window section, just two blocks, two full blocks of glass. Right there. And the exterior detailing for that, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior while we're here because we got some of these quartz blocks that are overhanging the uh, flat windows right, right there, those two. Let's take a look now from the top. All right, and uh, let's go back. We need to go back and take a look at the interior now. In fact, we need to go back to this tower because there are a couple of overhanging quartz blocks right here as well in the four corners of this one. Right there. And we've also got a similar thing overhanging now in our main, uh, our main uh, section right here as well. You see, you just want to overhang them like that there. And once you do one of those, you want to do the others exactly the same. And then back here, a bit of uh, calcite detailing for the tracery at the back. All right, uh, detail here for the interior of this tower. We do have a couple of overhanging blocks in here, but not too many because 
But because of the shape of the tower, it's not, uh, it's not exactly as symmetrical as the first one is. A lot of detailing here for the stairwell, though. And uh, we already looked at that, so I think that's all there is to see on that face. Let's go on to another one. All right, so back again here, detailing with the tracery at the front. One block of calcite and then some glass and more calcite and more glass. Uh, now we've got, uh, what, tough and cobble sitting on top of the upside down stone brick stairs. Right there, detailing here for the window tracery, for the smaller windows. Our uh, diorite arches going straight up here. Just like so. Of course, we've got the rest of our buttress being tied into the wall right here. And on the interior, we have our quartz blocks that we put being extended straight up as well for all of those. Uh, but uh, going back to this tower here, we've got cobble in the top on top of the upside down stone brick stairs. And then the diorite behind that for those. And on the interior where we put that overhanging quartz, you want to put, uh, just extend that up another block level as well. And I'm, I'm really not sure why that that isn't, that that isn't dark, right? I'll try and fix that as we go. Because I'm pretty sure that that should be dark, right, like that. That's just one of those places where I didn't copy it in effectively. That's kind of how I do these buildings. I'll, I'll make one section right, and then I'll copy and paste it a bunch to, uh, to update the other windows. It looks like I, I missed one. On that little section, I, I cut it a little too close. Like I got the front part, but I didn't get the other two blocks behind it. Uh, so, detail here for the flying buttress. Same deal as the previous one. Tied into the building and then just going straight up for a little counterweight here. So you want to do all your other buttresses the same. And then we'll come back here to our old friend, the wall. And take a look at its detailing. All right, straight across there, then turn the corner, then straight this way. A little bit more of the buttress here right there, and then of course the dar right and the window sections right there. The next section of the buttress here. Same detail over there for the counterweight. And over here detailing for the diagonal window. For the buttress again. And it's counterweight. All right, let's take a look at that from the inside now that we're, since we're already back here. And oh. That's interesting. And there shouldn't be exposed cobblestone visible. Why is that there? That's for sure a mistake. Not to um, hold that thought. Why is there? Hmm. That, I'm pretty sure that should be filled in with another block of, uh, deep slate tiles. So so here where these where these red blocks are, where those missing blocks are, fill that in with deep slate tile, just like we have, you know, this block here. 
Sorry about that. Lots of little mistakes on this building. Yeah. And I went over it with a... I mean, I was going to say a fine-tooth comb, but obviously not. I should have spent another week just looking at it. Uh, but it had already been so long in building, I didn't want to delay you any longer than I had to, so... I mean, it's like 99% right. Uh, but I'm catching all the mistakes I made as we build it, so you can fix them all as we go. So it shouldn't be too much of an impact, I don't think. It'll just make all the, uh... It'll just make the materials list be slightly wrong. When it comes down to it, I think. Because of the extra blocks we need. My apologies about that. Uh, on the interior here, detailing with the calcite tracery. Against the wall, let's take a look here at the interior walls of the tower. And the stairwell. All right, I think uh, I think that was all there was to do on that one. Let's go on to another phase. Uh, so here, same detailing back at the front with a bit of calcite, and then the detailing for the tracery for our large window. Uh, back here again, we've got uh, the stone brick stairs poking out again, some of the filler blocks poking out when they shouldn't be. Right there. Detailing here for the window, pretty straightforward. Uh, a bit more detailing. I think it's gonna be the, the last little bit of detailing for our flying buttresses. And they attach to the wall here. And then we've got the lowermost portions of uh, what's going to be our, our large, uh, our very large Gothic arches that we're gonna have uh, these are now coming into view here. We're just building the lowermost sections of those. And of course, that is why we had the flying buttress uh, at at this level, at this level down here. Because it has to catch the outthrust at this level here from the arch. Because uh, there's, there's, there's going to be, at, where, where the arch comes to its bottom right here, it's going to have some horizontal outthrust. It's going to want to push the building out in this direction here. I'm saying this because if you ever want to build one of these, make sure you have the, the sections of the flying butchers correct with the bottom of your arch. Uh, if you don't, well, I mean, it's just Minecraft, so it won't matter. But if we were doing this for real, and this was done, actually, they, they would build their flying buttress like, you know, a couple of blocks too high. So all the forces weren't being caught from the arches, and, and I mean, in some cases it would result in collapse. In most cases, however, they would figure out their mistake, and they would have to go back and build uh, and build additional, whoops, and build additional thicker uh, buttresses below the ones they had already made. I don't remember if it was in. I don't remember which French cathedral it is. It might be Chart. It might be another one. Where, uh, if you look on the outside, if you see, like, if you see more than two sets of flying buttresses, if you see, like, a third buttress below another buttress, you can tell that that uh, that, 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 uh, that is where they screwed up and built the buttress too high. And then they figured it out because the building was collapsing. They had to go back, put in entirely new buttresses to fix the problem. So, I mean, even even when they were when they were building these, this is very much uh, cutting edge uh, stuff in the medieval period, because uh, you can tell that they made mistakes. So they had to uh, they had to fix them. See, it's one of the reasons I don't feel too bad about when I make the little mistakes here in the building. That's because uh, the cathedral builders themselves made mistakes as well. I mean, that doesn't really justify my mistakes, but still. Fix 
fix the filler blocks there. And here, it looks like I had a filler stair block somehow. And then, then all, all these blocks back down, back down here. That should for sure be all right. Make make this window here match the other three we just did. All right, so let's take a look on the inside of this now because we have a couple blocks of overhanging quartz here in the corners. Because this is forming the bottoms now of what's going to be our rib vaults. They're where we're going to be building. You remember the little rib vaults that we built up way back down in, I don't know, part two or three? Well, we're going to be building more of those again up here in the tops of these towers and also the very large ones in the tops of uh, the, the main body of the church. Uh, so back over here, a bit more copper there. And then the section here for the flying buttresses connecting to the walls. And of course, you know, you know the drill. All the windows are exactly the same. Just like so, until we get all the way back down here to our wall. Fixing that there. And then there. And up oh, the corner block there. Just like so, back here detailing for the wall, the last little bit of our buttress here being attached to the wall. Detailing for the window and its tracery. The diagonal flying buttress here. And its counterweight top, almost finished with those. And the diagonal window here. Just four blocks of uh, stained glass, two blocks of those. Like so. The diagonal buttress again. Two blocks of copper for that. And then the uh, flat window at the back. Take a look at that now from the inside. Because we do have, you can see, we have some overhanging quartz at, uh, at various points in this room, which means we're getting to the lowermost level of what's going to be a, a, a um, how shall I say, what is going to be an octagonal uh, rib vaulted dome type thing. There's probably a better word for it, but... Uh, it was tough to design, so it's going to be a little tough to build, so... Just, just bear, just uh, bear with me and we'll be able to get it done. If you were able to do all the, all the spider um, rib vaulting down there, this is going to be uh, about the same in terms of difficulty, I think. Maybe a little bit easier. It's a little bit more regular than the stuff down there was. But that's one of the most difficult things to do in here. Yeah, these those two blocks for sure were hidden from me. Though those definitely need to be filled in with uh, the the deep slate tiles. All right, so take a look at this from below. You can see we've got the four blocks of quartz overhanging in the corners here, right there, forming the lowermost sections of our uh, our rib vaults. Let's go back here. Take a look now at the interior. You probably already built this, but I just want to go over it again just to make sure. And back here, detailing for the wall, just like three blocks of calcite. Like so. And then uh, I think I got another phase in me for today. Uh, so back here at our old friend, the window, more tracery with the calcite and the glass. 
and then back to the vertical wall elements here. And then, of course, you can see we've got a little bit of dark prismarine poking out again. That's because at the tops of these windows, let me back up a minute. You remember how we did uh, this pattern down here with these windows at the bottom? Well, since we're coming to uh, tops of these windows again, where, where we're at up there is roughly equivalent to this section back down here. So you can see we've got, we've got quite a ways to go with these windows yet. In fact, that's going to probably stretch into the next video. Like so, detailing here for where all that attaches to the buttress. In fact, the flying buttresses are, are now finished. We've, we've done every one of those. So if you want to, you can, you can land here and just, you know, take a moment to just walk around and, and admire your, your graceful flying buttresses. Quite nice to look at. One of, one of my favorite things to build. In fact, I, I could almost say that they're, they're pro they might be my uh, most favorite thing to build in these cathedrals, although it's, it's a, a toss-up between this and the rib vaults. I mean, both of them are, are, quite, are quite fun. But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, back here to the detailing for that and the detailing for the window. You can see the windows are narrowing now here at the top. So we might, we might finish with the window frames today, but we're not going to finish with the entire sequence of the window. So once you do one of those, we want to do all the others the same until we get down here to the wall. Let's drop a bookmark there, though. We need to come back and take a look at everything from the interior, because you can see we've got some overhanging quartz now right here. And this is because we have, uh, we have some internal arches that um, I should probably wait to explain to explain that until we get higher up when it'll make more sense but because we have wider arches here and smaller arches for the windows um, the, 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 the vaulting we need to do in the roof has to be bent down on the sides a little bit to compensate for that that's why we have the overhanging blocks here forming before we get the, the overhanging blocks um, up here. So let's take a quick uh, glide down the hall, take a look at all that in sequence, just so we can make sure we're on the same page. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the, the back wall for the tracery. It's just going straight up. Another three blocks of calcite. Uh, let's go back over here. We can take a look now at the interior of this room because we've got more overhanging courts. Do all four corners the same. Just like so. And I think I need to uh, need to fix that. That there. All of that should should look like this. really fouled up that window there just in those little just in that little two block section the the outer section is right it's just that little two block section is wrong uh so back here uh detailing for the tops of the buttresses here i just put a little decorative uh, finial on top of these in fact if memory serves it, the, the um i think they're gonna look like that with a couple more blocks of cut copper in total but just, you know, ha just, just hang them out like that. Like there for all four of those. And then we'll go back here, pick up our bookmark, and move on. All right, detailing here for the tower and its associated windows. Same detailing we just did on the front tower, really except for the, the back wall here, of course. And uh, what I think is going to be the last little bit of this buttress here, attaching to the wall. And the detailing here for the window and its frame. The flying buttress section here. 
the decorative uh, finials on top of the other buttresses here, 90 degrees to each other. Uh, detailing back here for the diagonal window, got just uh, two blocks of stained glass right there and calcite otherwise. Diorite window frames and the de detailing here for the, uh, the buttress where it attaches to the wall. All right, let's take a look at that now from the inside. From the top, we'll take a look at it from the bottom in a moment. You can see now we have a couple of blocks of uh, lapis now working its way in, which lets you know a ceiling has been now being formed because I just, I really like to use lapis on my ceilings. Well, the floors too sometimes, but, I'll, but mostly the ceilings for these types of buildings. So that's our first couple of ceiling blocks coming into view. Right there, and now let's take a look at that sequence from the bottom so we can double check our work. All right. Uh, I think uh, we already looked on the inside of everything there. Did I, did I skip the stairwell and the tower? I, I may have done that. Yeah, I think I did. All right, so detailing here for this corner and uh, that corner. And then otherwise the corners are flat. There's a block there, though. And the uh, simple detailing here for our stairwell. All right. Uh, let's do another phase. Uh, okay, back here at the front. Detailing here for the big window for the tracery. A bit of uh, diorite and dark prismarine here for what's going to form the, um, uh, the the upper portions of the, the window frame. Well, I mean the, the lowermost portions of the upper window frame as well, I should say. All right, detailing here for these windows. Take a look at the outside first, and then we'll take a look at the interior. On this straight section here, do, do all those the same until we get, of course, back down here to the wall. Now let's fly back to the front. Take a look at this from the top down. I mean, from the, the bottom up, actually. So you can see you just got two overhanging blocks of quartz. And these has formed the lowermost portions of what is going to be our pointy gothic arches, you remember way back from the tour. So do all those exactly the same until we get all the way back down to the wall where we're just extending everything up with the calcite and the deep slate tiles. Uh, all right, let's go back now to the tower. The small tower is at the front. Uh, they should be pretty symmetrical from this point forward. So once we once you do one quadrant of these, uh, the other uh, three quarters should be done exactly the same. I think it's only going to be a little different because I think I may have put a double a double uh, buttress on those, if memory serves. Yep, and just uh, fill that in with dye right there to make that match. Do it to you from the top down. And let's take a peek inside because we've got uh, some overhanging quartz blocks now. Where our, uh, our our rib vaults are going to be going. 
uh, and just straight up, uh, two blocks straight up for the uh, decorative finials on the counterweights for the buttresses. All right, let's pick up our bookmark, continue on here at the back wall. Then the straight wall here. And uh, then uh, this section here now. We're, we're done with the buttressing. So we're at the back. So we're now looking at doing uh, the, the window frames. And the window frames and the arches for these, they do, they do peek out a little bit. And, uh, and, and, and uh, hang over the lowermost section just, just a little bit. We'll take a look at this from the inside in a moment. Let's just get the, the upper view first. Got a bit of gold ore making its appearance again. The, the old texture sparkly gold ore. The new one will look, well, it'll look 80% uh, as good, I think. But it's still worth doing. All right, same detailing for the decorative finials for the uh, uh, buttress toppers there. And now let's take a look at this from the inside. Let's take a look top down first and then from the bottom. Oop, excuse me. All right, let's take a glance here from the bottom to kind of take stock of where we are. Go, I think, uh, I think we can take a look in here now as well. Take a look from the bottom first. You can see we've got the overhanging blocks of quartz here, so we're getting ready to form our uh, our rib vault in this little tower, this in this little uh, little chapel up here anyway in the tower, and the quick detailing for the stairwell. And I think uh, we do need these these stone bricks here. I think I think this is the landing because we're going to turn and start and start going up this direction again. I'm pretty sure. All right, so that's all there was on that one. So I think I can crank out another one today. Uh, so detailing here, of course, for the tracery for our very large window. Here at the front. Detailing for the sides of the tower. And for the window, uh, the, the arched window frames and their associated decoration. Let's take a look at that from the top down. Just kind of glide our way. You can see just another repeating pattern all the way down the, uh, the, the base of the cathedral until we get all the way to our old friend, the wall. Uh, let's uh, pause for a moment here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Six blocks of calcite there for the decoration for the tracery. And then on the interior here, you can see we've got some overhanging lapis now. A couple of blocks of lapis. And quartz, just like so. Take a look at that from the top down. Repeat that pattern all the way until we get back to the front. Right here. All right, let's take a look uh, at the, uh, this tower over here. In fact, let me, let me go ahead and fix, fix, no, it's going to be, yeah, it's, it would be like, be like that there, I think. That's because those, these blocks are missing.
Yeah, whoops. Yeah, so that one should look like this one, which should look like all the other ones we've been building. I know I've kind of beat that to death, but it's it's kind of a big mistake, so I want to make sure that we correct it. Let's go all around this, and then we'll take a look at the interior section for this tower in a moment. Like so. I am seeing. I think I do have some extra blocks here that I don't have back over here. I kind of think I know why that's there. Let's just go ahead and build it like this for now. Because I'm pretty sure that's going to be right. Because I think I have a second set of buttresses above these, if memory serves. It's been a while since I looked at the reference model, though. Let's take a look at the interior now with the rib vaulting in the corner here. Of course, do all four corners exactly the same. Like that there. And let's get a little altitude, take stock of where we're at so far. We're up quite a ways now. Uh, and we're finishing off the sequence with the uh, decorative finials on the vine buttress, just like so. Two blocks of cut copper on top of those to form this little ring. And then uh, and then those are done. We don't have to do anything more on those. They're 100% they're complete, which we've been building that since, since part one. So it's, it's quite a ways, quite a ways indeed. Uh, let's go back over here now and pick up our bookmark. Take a look at the detailing here for the wall. And it's attached tower. Just like so. For the flat wall and the detailing here for the window and its associated frame. And the detailing here for the diagonal window. Two blocks of glass right there. And then back here at the back. And really quickly, you've you probably already finished these. Just two blocks cut copper on both of those, and the diagonal buttresses are finished. Just like so. Uh, now let's take a look now at the inside. Let's take a look from the top down. You can see you've got quite a lot of overhanging quartz now. For our octagonal ribs, of course, which means there's going to be eight of them. Like so. Let's take a look at that sequence now from below. Just to make sure that we're getting it all right. Just right there. And I think we need to come over here and take a look now at the top down for this sequence here for the attached tower and then take a look on the inside of that. Uh, you, you will end up noticing on this one, the, the, the rib vault for this one isn't quite in the center of this one. Just because of the dimensions of this tower, I kind of had to, I kind of had to squish it off to one side, so it's not, uh, it's not exactly perfect, so it's, it's just something we had to do to make it work. Because of the because of the stairwell back here, because you can see it's a very tight fit, so I didn't really have any space to push it any farther over this way. Now, speaking of the stairwell, here's the detailing for that. Right there. And uh, I think that that is. 
probably all the time we're going to have for today. So I hope you are enjoying the Temple of Time Cathedral tutorial. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.